Perfect. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for joining. So excited. We're going to get our Halloween on. So we're going to do something that's, you know, pretty simple and you can, you know, use with hopefully the leftover cardboard you have because we all get things shipped to us. So um, I'm going to go through materials. We're going to go through the project. And at the end, I'll answer questions. So the good thing about being here live is that, you know, put your questions in the chat. I may answer them as we go through stuff, but if not, if not I'll go through at the end and, um, you know, be able to ask whatever you like. So with that being said, let's go. Thanks so much for being here. Okay, so to go ahead and make our spooky, spooky boards, we need a couple things. Um, as you can tell, cardboard. But we're going to need, so we're going to talk about breaking down our box, whatever you have, cardboard box. To do that for cutting, we're going to need a cutting mat. So these are something you do need, but it's a buy it once and keep it for life situation. Um, you know, they're, they're called self-healing. So it means that when you make a cut in it, it will kind of reabsorb. It's instead of like when you have a cutting board, you make a cut maybe too hard. You see that knife line forever. These don't do that. So that's why it specifically is called a cutting mat. And they're great. Material to cut with. We got a little utility knife. We're going to talk about how to use that. And then a metal ruler. We always, always, always make sure we're cutting, if we're using a metal blade, we're cutting with a ruler to guide us because we can hurt ourselves if we don't use that. And I'll get into deets on how to mess up a fingy if you're not careful. So that's the cutting part. And then uh, making our boards and painting part, we're gonna need a pencil and a Prismacolor pencil. I am obsessed with these. If you've taken my class before, they are smooth like butter and they're absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna need brushes. Uh, we've got the Princeton 12, and then this comes in a set, but it's basically any uh, size two flat. We are gonna need a bunch of colors of paint. And this is all in the class list. We're gonna need gesso. Gesso is amazing. Gesso is a uh, primer. So we're gonna get into how to use that, but we're using gesso instead of white because I want to introduce what that is, how to use it, and it's so pigmented. So that's why that was chosen. And then we just got our colors of acrylic paint. Spooky. Lastly, artist tape. Artist tape is amazing. It's different than your regular tape because it's meant to be removable. And so you can use your masking tape, your artist tape, whatever have you, but something similar to this. So we can tape our eyes to the back of our boards wherever we want them to. And then use, you know, adhere them to your spot. And you also can use those um, 3M strips. I'm pretty sure I listed because those things are rad as well. And I've used them successfully, putting them on the walls and more importantly, off the walls with no damage. So those are my friends. And then to getting our circle shapes, because we're not using templates today, we're going to do mostly freehand, but I wanted to show how we can use ordinary objects to get circle shapes just to get us going. So I have a regular size soda can and a mini one. And as you can see, Look at that, that's the size of our eyeballs. We'll get into that. All right, let's boogie fam. Let's get this out of the way so we can cut up some boards and some eyeballs. So I'm gonna just break down a box real quick. I had these little small boards that are about like four and a half by 11, that's kind of the little ones. And the big ones are gigantic. You don't have to do anything specific. It was just based on the boxes I had. So this is a giant, this is 22 inches by about four and a half. So, you know, this is a giant board, but I just use the box I have. But what we're looking for is, I liked cutting a short and a long sizes rectangle. So that's it, right? Cause we are just faking like, when boards are, when uh, when doors and windows and stuff on like spooky buildings or condemned buildings are boarded up, right? It's just cheap plywood, two by fours. So we're just mimicking that here. So don't worry if yours is too small, too big, doesn't exist. We're just using whatever boxes we have extra lying around. That's the upcycling part of this. Do do do. That being said, let's break down a box. So. 
since this is a nice pretty rectangle here, uh, I'm just going to use that. So I'm just going to take my knife. This is self-locking. Not all knives are like that. So some knives you'll buy, like the Ulfa brands, have a little knob where you turn it to right to lock or turn it to left and you can move it down and lock it. This one by Scotch is kind of self-locking. So just be mindful, know what kind of knife you bought. Both are great, but one you have to lock or else you can cut yourself. So I'm just going to cut along this line here, just use my ruler and the knife. Great. Pressing down hard on that metal ruler so it doesn't slide around on us. This metal ruler, when you're cutting with um, blades, make sure it has some kind of cork or adhesive back or otherwise the metal will slip around and you can lose your, your grip. And we don't want that. It is not here. Okay. So I'm just gonna go with the dimension I already had. So this can go with the other boards I have. Pencil would be nice. What did we say this was? Four and a third, whatever, no big deal. It's just spooky Halloween. I'm just gonna make a mark. Make a mark. I'll connect my line here. Maybe it was a little short, that's fine. The good thing about spooky stuff is you don't have to be too precise. Okay, it's a little slanted, there we go, all right. So I'm going to use this line we already have. Don't have to trace anything else. Pressing down hard when you are cutting because we want to cut through the cardboard, but we're pressing down even harder on the ruler. Because if you score this, right, when you don't cut all the way through, that's not a big deal. You can go over it again, but we're really holding down that ruler so we don't move the ruler and ruin our cut, but more importantly, so we don't cut ourselves. So this scored a little bit. That's okay. I can just kind of wiggle it. And honestly, just like really gently run my blade on the other side just to get it through that paper. If you want to be lazy and not want to reline it up, it's really all it needs. Oop. All right. So we've got kind of the board like we have here. Lovely. I kind of like this side. This side's more dirty. I don't know. Let's go with it because we're we've got a, a dirty boarded up house. Close your blade when you're not using it. We're gonna get all the cutting done first. No, you know what, we're gonna do the birds first. Okay, so, not too many boards. We have like a little fake wood grain and a little pencil. Um, we're just using our pencil to make little fake nails. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the brown acrylic paint. I'm going to put a little bit on my palette. Acrylic dries really quickly, so always err on the side of putting less on your palette than more because you can't get that dried paint back. Now, this is inexpensive, but you know, it all adds up. we we'll just put a little bit of paint down here. And let's see, I think I used a flat. Yeah, that probably looks like the same one. So I, um, and you can look up online. I was looking up plywood just to kind of look at the wood grain because plywood, even though it's like a composite type of wood, it still has that grain show through. So I kind of like just taking my brush and making just like these little knots. Not really planning anything. We're just gonna make, you know, fake out the lines of our fake tree. 
I'm just dabbing from my palette. Off the thing a little bit. Grab a little more paint from here. Fill it in there. It's not really an exact science at all. Being loose, painting our grain. And if you want to go in and kind of add a little more paint to where your brush may have got dry, do that. And if you don't, uh, love that for you. Also great. Okay. We're going to call that Gucci. Now we have a wet brush and we know that acrylic dies fast, dries fast, excuse me. So I have some plain dish soap on my palette. You might be able to see. Since we are live in my home. We can't go over to my sink right now, but what I would do is go ahead and load your brush up with your soap. Um, I just use a natural, natural dish soap and a little bit of water, and then you can use your palette to do this on, but since we're gonna keep painting on our palette, I'm just gonna use my hand. And we're just gonna kind of move in circles and clean this brush here. Now, again, I will be doing this at my sink with a lot more water. But again, the importance of not ruining our tools and washing them as soon as we're done with that, because we're not going to come back to this size brush for a moment and we'll be changing colors. So wash your brushes. And when you're at the sink, um, always have your brush painting, your brush end pointing down. So the water is going down with it because we don't want all the paint to go into the ends of the bristles here because it's really hard to get out. And that's another way where that paint can harden in the brush itself and ruin your brush. So I'm just rinsing the best I can with a cup instead of a sink. La la la. I've got some paper towel over here. I'm gonna dab it dry and put it aside until we need it again. Great success. And then uh, I just put these little like fake nails on with pencil because pencil is made with graphite and it's got this fun sheen to it, just like the edge of a nail. So we just painted this. And so you can see it's still a little shiny, but we'll just make sure that we don't put our ruler on the wet paint. If you have a metal ruler like this, I literally just used this hole, which is like a good, diameter of a nail, trace it through with my pencil, and fill it in. If your ruler doesn't have a hole like this, another way to work with what you have is by taking another pencil, got a little extra graphite here, so you do have to kind of blow it away. Now it's not as precise as using this, but you can. Take another tool and use that circumference and trace around. And now I've got an outline I can go ahead and color in and fill in my nail as well. So however you want to do it, if you have a hole or if you want to use another tool, both are great. Just keep filling that in so it's nice and shiny like our nails so you can see it when it's hung up far away. So we're gonna put this aside and we're gonna paint into the eyes because that's where the details are. So we just know that we had some extra um, cardboard we cut up. Now I have some little chunks already set aside and we're gonna make our spooky fun eyes. Using the frame here. How did I already lose one? Here we go. Here's another one. Okay. So two of them I used the big can and the other one I used a small can. So we'll just do that again. And I'm just going to take this off as well so we can kind of reference them as we're working here. This artist tape, right? It comes off so well. It's fabulous. It's inside. Okay. 
go ahead and grab this one. And all I did was just trace around. So I took the soda can, like let's say we're gonna make the set of eyes first. I'm gonna trace around. Okay. Hard to see, but it's a pencil circle. And then I like a little bit of an overlap. I think that's kind of cool. A little spooky, a little off kilter. So I'm gonna line the can up so it overlaps that first circle we just made. Hard to see. Right, it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. I can go back on and finish out that circle. But it's not a big deal because we added a little piece so we can tape it behind that board like we just saw. So we have something for it to tape to. I just eyeball tape out an inch away from that Venn diagram looking circle we just made about an inch, draw a line. Just a couple inches wide. We're gonna, doesn't have to be precise because we're just cutting it out so we can adhere it. So I have two circles, we got a little Venn diagram here and our tab that we're just gonna use for cutting. So we can actually go ahead and erase this one. We're gonna paint over it, but just so you can start to see how things are going to form. Okay. We'll go ahead. Get my knife and cut out. I like cutting things because this is kind of hard if we cut it all the way around in a big piece. I like getting it out of its, getting it out free from its larger material. So I'm going to cut this out of its big piece first. I find it's easier to work with when you're cutting curves if it's smaller. So I'm not measuring, I'm just cutting around our shape so we can work with it better. Didn't cut all the way through, that's totally fine. My balls, freedom. Okay, so I'm just going to cut. Cut. You know, check the back, make sure it cut through. That's it. So I'm going to cut out my eyes. I kind of like to turn as I cut. I find that helps it get a nice smooth curve. And before I get to this very small intersection, I'm actually going to turn this away from me so I don't cut potentially into my piece. I'm going to go into this corner and cut away. This doesn't matter. So if we cut this out, it's no big deal. Well, we didn't want to cut into the eyeball we just traced. Okay. We can see that it's not all the way cut through. That's okay. We can just run our blade over it pretty gently on the back side just to break it free. Pushing away feeling, all right, it's tearing away for me. Cool, let's keep going. Away. Great. Great, so I did that fast, so it's kind of rough and we may have to clean this up, but that's okay, I will show you how. I slowed because 
this was coming to this little intersection and I didn't want to cut into this. So now I'm flipping it over and cutting it out that way. Feeling where it's not all the way cut through, I don't want to break it and have a jagged edge. Just bending generally to see where it needs to have a little more cut. Okay, awesome. Don't love this point. No big deal. Let me go back over and kind of smooth it out. Awesome. Okay. Eyeballs. Put your neck away when you're not using it. Very important. Okay, so we've got that. And then maybe, let's see, based on time, we will also do the little one and maybe we'll tell Sayonara to our friend here because once we know these ones, we can make these ones. Um, this one, I thought it was really fun. I just made it something so it's got extra space, right? These all have extra spaces so we can tape them behind. And this is the same thing with that one. Just taped it behind our board. Okay. Bye, friend. Let's go ahead and so we, since you've already made these, if you, you know, depending on how much you want to make, once you've cut one of these out, you could literally just trace what you've done, right? That would be quite fast, but we're using a different size, so I won't do that. I'm going to use the smaller can to use for our smaller eyeballs. a little further apart. So this has too much overlap. Awesome. Okay. And the same thing, we're just gonna give ourselves a little room to adhere it. I'm not measuring, I'm just kind of like, oh, what's about the middle of the eyeball? We don't need that much room, but really just enough room to adhere. So there's no hard and fast, it's just using your, your judgment. Awesome. Grab your knife. So we've got the same thing. It's a little hard to see with the pencil and the glare, but same thing, just our little baby eyes over here. Cut this out just like we did. Pressing pretty hard down into our cardboard, but knowing that if we score it instead of cutting it, that's totally fine. Also, knowing that it's way easier to cut this thing free. Let's do that, shall we? It needs a little more. Sometimes I just like to do this and just get stuff out of my way. I find that's really helpful to have less mass when you're dealing with curves. Don't like the way that one comes out. I don't know if I need to fix it. That looks all jagged and crazy and maybe not the way we're intending. Let's go ahead and 
So what we've done, make it easier for me to go on the back side. I can clean that up a little bit. Spoopy Halloween. It's not perfect. And that's fine. So these are fun, and this is something I did a few Halloweens ago. I, I remade this class with these paints for this class, but I have another set that I've used for years. So once you're done painting your eyes and have all your boards, you set them up. I use them year after year. I just would stack them all together after I take the adhesive off, stack them all together and literally take a couple like plastic bags and just wrap them up and label them on the outside. So I remember what was in here and then just use them again. You know, you spent the time, you made something super fun and playful. Why not keep it year after year? So, you know, spending a little time making a little bit of storage so you can know what's in there and label it always helps. Labeling as well, because you know, they're a little, if, if they get bent, you'll be sad. Close your knife when you're not using it. For them tiny eyes up. All right, cool. So I didn't paint these ones, but I did paint this one. You know, choice. I just liked the way the shape did. The only thing I did different here, then this one, you can see it's the big soda can. All I did was I changed the shape. So I just drew, I just took more cardboard and made kind of like a furrowed brow, if you will. So you can paint this or not. I kind of ended up going with leaving them blank. So they just disappeared and the eyes were really what stood out. I'm gonna do that for these two. Get out of here. I am going to get the gesso. Gesso is awesome. It is primer. So it is also highly pigmented. Now we don't need primer because it's acrylic adheres to cardboard. But why we're using is it's uh, more highly pigmented actually than our white. And you can use it. So, you know, it's, I like to honestly use gesso instead of white for a lot of my personal projects. I'm gonna put some on my palette over here. I'm gonna get our big brush. And we're just gonna paint in the whole circles of our eyes. Yeah, I didn't put too much gesso out. We may need to grab more, that's no big deal because with acrylic, she dries quick. And I'm not listening to my own advice here about not putting putting some surface down. So let me quickly grab the towel here. So I'm doing this on top of my fancy cutting mat, which I don't recommend, but it's black and easier for you to see what I'm doing on the countertop. So acrylic paint, um, if you get it on, what you're doing, what your, excuse me, what your surface is, quickly go in with soap and water, like a paper towel, it should come up, but if it dries, then you're gonna have to scrape it off and that's a real pain. We'll get into acrylic painting. This is just our underlayer, so I am not being precious at all. We're just putting paint on our eyeball shapes. So it looks fairly opaque. That's all we're going for here. This is a flat brush because the end is flat. Um, it's just good for covering surfaces. It's got a crisp edge. You don't have to use a flat if you like something better. Sometimes I do, I use flats for a lot of curves. It just depends on how you like to paint. And that's the good part about experimenting. In the pack I included, there's also some filberts, which have a curved edge, and those are great for curves. One can imagine. 
So since this stuff is drying really quick, I'm already going back on my second layer. Put this aside, do our other eyeballs. Right. Same thing, just filling in those shapes. Once we finish this, our awesome moderator Chanel is going to pull up a quick PDF I made and we're going to talk more about acrylic painting 101 while our gesso dries. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a little more. shaky. Look at that difference. One coat, two coat. Lovely. going to go over this edge right I could I could sit here and finish this edge and clean it up more but we're going to go over our edge with our prisma color so don't even worry about it I'm going to add a little bit more here we're adding white to the whole surface because we're adding colored paint onto cardboard and they aren't that opaque. So the colors that we're adding, we're all having a white underlay. So they show as opaque and rich as possible. Otherwise they wouldn't be nearly as strong. They would look quite faded and muddy if we painted directly onto the cardboard. Right, monsters. Let's go. Okay. We're going to set these aside. I'm going to rinse this off quickly and it pains me to not go directly into a sink, but we do what we do for a live class, fam. Okay. Dab it with water, natural dish soap, nothing fancy. I'm just mixing it around on my palette here. Just getting getting the paint out. After this course, I will immediately be running these to the sink. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set this aside for now. Um, while our gesso dries, we're gonna talk about acrylic. So if could Chanel could pull up that PDF for me, that would be lovely. And I'm gonna dab this brush dry. All right, prep now, save time later, acrylic paint. So what I didn't do because uh, I'm teaching the class is cover your surfaces. So acrylic, you're painting, you're gonna get it on. You're gonna get it on your hands. You're gonna get it on your clothes. It's gonna happen, um, especially your first rodeo. So cover your surfaces. You don't need anything fancy. I'm literally just throwing some paper towel under, towel under here because we're using such a small space and I'm using some to dry my brushes as well. Um, you can use, uh, you can get a drop cloth, uh, like a canvas drop cloth and just use it once and just make it your, your canvas drop cloth. When I do professional work, I have one that is just a painting drop cloth for bigger pieces. You can use parchment paper, an underutilized hero. And um, that's quite nice because it doesn't stick to your 
pieces. And um, yeah, just you just need something inexpensive, even a, like a, a tablecloth, like a party tablecloth, like those plastic ones. That's a great drop cloth for your surface that you can use again, but something to cover your surface so you're not scraping paint off is ideal. And then get you some paint and clothes. So I have a hoodie when I'm doing like professional work that I wear all the time. Just have something at least a top and like maybe a pair of jeans or whatever you like to work in that you are okay with getting a little paint on because when you're not, you will get paint on it. I did that two weeks ago. I was wearing like, you know, my fancy, fancy athleisure and you know, I got paint on it. And I was like, why did I do this to myself? I know better. So just be prepared. You know, painting is a little messy. Acrylic is, um, it does dry fast. So as we know, it will dry fast on your clothes. And then if you want to go to the second one for me, do not commit crimes, please. I literally saw this walking my dog and I gasped because someone let their brush dry so much. It is now like a petrified brush. I don't know how long it's been there. It was too late for me to save it. I wouldn't touch it anyway. But that's what happens if you leave your acrylic paint on your brushes. It will harden and turn your brush into an unusable thing. And, you know, your brushes didn't do anything wrong to you. You know, they just want to just want to help you. So always, always, always wash your brushes and, and um, you know, soak in water, let them dry. I do a little dab, dab, dab with the paper towel and then I let them dry kind of on an angle over my sink or my palette. So they dry, you know, they drip down. So when we're washing our brushes over the sink, we let the water go down off the bristles so it doesn't get the paint into the actual brush and we let them dry. So, you know, respect your tools and they will perform for you. Otherwise you create, you know, art crimes and no one wants to do that. It's Halloween, but we're not about that. So, okay, that was a good time for our gesso to dry, right? We can tell now, thanks to know. Yay, okay. So with acrylic, you can see that there's just a little bit of wetness here. You can tell by the sheen, but the rest of this is dry. So as I'm getting everything ready, just this piece, just a couple. So we will move this out of the way. And get our, our colors, okay. So we, what did we do? Can you see what we're doing here? Go back. Well, acrylic dries really fast, which is fantastic. And we're gonna now just outline our shapes. So the small can has real heavy lids. So all I did was take a pencil and draw some ellipses. So I'm gonna redraw that other eyeball. You know, they kind of had them overlapping. Okay. And now I'm just going to take my pencil, draw a lid. They're not perfect, that's great. These are spooky, kooky eyeballs. You know, it's just about making marks. I'm using a pencil, I'm pressing pretty hard. Honestly, when you're doing this yourself, you can really go a lot lighter. But I want y'all to be able to see the marks I'm making. Oh yeah, eye bags. This monster did not sleep good. Now I'm just gonna draw my irises. We're going to have them looking left. So I'm going to kind of have them over in the left side of each little eyeball. So it's already starting to look like a thing. And we're going to give them pupils. We're going to give them small pupils. Spooky little eyes. Spooky, spooky. Okay. Put over here and we'll draw the other ones. I'm going to fill in Brian. The rest of that eye. If you really want to be precious about it, you can grab your can again but and trace to get this curve, but you don't have to. I'm going to draw this top lid. I'm 
And this one, you had them looking all the way to the right. So you got some really big irises. And if you are just downright unhappy with what you drew, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you really don't like it, you can, um, after your paint is dry, erase your lines um, and then go over with another coat of gesso. Uh, the good thing about gesso is that it's thicker than, you know, most white paints. So that can do that. But if you're working and you don't have gesso, you just have white, it's the same thing. Um, the, effectively, it's a different product. But I like using primer because of those properties. Boop. Okay, let's draw some pupils. Let me get this one a little more of a curved. Mm -hmm. okay. It's all coming together. Now these pencil lines are still here, but remember we're we're just tucking them behind our boards, so it's not worth me even erasing it, right? You can be like, okay. but no one's gonna see it because we just take them to where the bottom of our eyes are. Fantastic. Let's get some colors going. Let's do our lightest to darkest. So we're gonna get our neon greens going. All right, we're gonna make it. So if this paint does dry fast, but with this paint, we do need a couple layers of each. So we are gonna kind of work around our different colors here. So we're using the neon green, the orange, and the violet. So right now I'm gonna get the neon green or some of my palette. Also, be careful when you're opening up bottles like this. Sometimes, you know, you have to put a bit of force and some paint will, will splash out on you. So again, another reason where you think you won't get paid on you and lo and behold, it happens. We'll grab our, I have the number two flat, but anything, just a little brush, right? So I'm grabbing my neon paint. Let's see if you can see me here. And we're just going to fill in our shapes. I'm going to go right over this pupil to show you how translucent this neon green is, right? It's really vibrant and neon, but it doesn't have a lot of opacity. So that's definitely why we put this white underneath our cardboard, or as you can imagine, right? You can't, you can't see that. It's barely giving the, the vibrancy that is in the bottle. Okay, so that's just one layer. We're gonna have to do a couple, but we're gonna go grab this one. And now these colors are all up to y'all. This is just a jumping off point. This is your craft. So if you wanna give them red eyes or, you know, even more veins or do a red, pink, white, black color story as opposed to our purple, green, and orange story, do that. You know, this is just, jumping off point, I liked using the, like a tertiary color scheme. Okay. Let me just go to here. And I just freehanded the kind of neon veins for this one. Just a couple squiggles, squiggle, 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 squiggle. And because this paint is um, quite thin, I really loaded up my brush here so we get some some thicker veins so we don't have to go over again. 
Well, this one, the second one we did last is drying. I'm going to come back on and give another coat. So it could be super cool to do these lids like a red and have like really pink eyelids or, you know, whatever you want. This is your spooky, spooky crap. Yep. See, the more you work the stuff, the more it wants to pick up. So it's really like lay some down and leave it because it is so translucent. Translucent meaning that the light, that it's not opaque, right? Opaque means it's not see-through. Translucent, uh, the light shows through. So the more I actually work this the lots wet, it's picking up pigment. So just leave it alone. Okay. We're going to have to come back and add another coat to this to get opaque like this one, but we're using the same brush. So we're going to wash our brush real quick and come back. You also can, you've got the whole kit. You know what, actually, we're just gonna do a quick rinse and grab a different color just so we keep going time-wise here. So you may have to do this where you wanna use, keep using the same small brush, that's cool. Um, just make sure you wash it in between. And if you walk away while coat's dry, even just dunk it in some water, like just, just don't leave your brushes. Don't abandon them. Get that over here. I'm gonna grab one of the little filberts from that set. It's a two, but it's a filbert. A filbert, it's got a curved edge. And it's good for doing curves, but again, you know, experiment. You'll see what you like working with. Where's the orange? Just got the same little orange here. And this is all, all the materials are listed in the class that you signed up for. So you know, if you're just watching and you want to use some of the steam stuff, absolutely do that. It's all linked in there. Fill in my iris. Same thing as our neon green. We've got just our first layer down. We're going to have to come back and add more. Add another layer. Maybe two to get it truly opaque. Why do I want it to be opaque? Well, it's more vibrant and our Halloween parties, our Halloween season generally has lower lighting. So we want the stuff we do to really be seen and stand out. And since this is a beginner class, I don't want to have to worry about brush strokes. So, you know, the more opaque our piece is, we don't have to worry about cleaning up brush strokes to get that super flat look. That's something, you know, I can cover in, in other classes as we get more advanced as I teach here. Jumping back in to our other side, throwing on a second coat. You can tell I put way too much orange out. Oops.
I'm dunking this in the water, giving it a good, good rinse. And soap, and then we're gonna grab our violet to just finish out our brushes. And then I'll, oop, we're hitting time close. Okay. So you've got a great idea, right? We did our lightest colors. And then I would go through and add the violets, right? This one, I did one layer of black and then I put the violet on top. So you can see that it's way darker. And this one, I put about three coats of violet. So I use this violet to just paint the lids just like we did. Oops, I'm not sure. Just like we did. And then this I did one coat of black and then like two coats of violet to get that darker look, right? And if you're like, I don't wanna do that, just do the violet, great, this is your craft. And then at the very end, I took our black paint and did a couple layers to fill in the pupils. So I let everything make sure I was really dry, painted the black, the pupils. And then once it was super dry, which we can tell, right? If it's, if it's not shiny anywhere, we know this is dry. Whereas, right, we can really see that this is not dry yet because of the sheen. So that's the cool thing about acrylic is it really lets you know. And then let's pretend that we're all done with these. All I did was just to kind of add more contrast was I took my Prismacolor once everything was dry and I just went over our lines. And so that's how it really started looking like that really fun animated kind of vintage cartoon shape. You just keep going over, but that's how those fun little shapes happened. So we went from lightest to darkest with our paints. We did a couple layers. We washed the crap out of our brushes and then we finished off our eyeballs with a Prisma, fantastic. A Prisma color um, is just a fantastic brand of colored pencils, but it's highly pigmented. It's smooth like butter. I try and do accessible things, but this pencil is a little more high end, but oh, I love her so much. <laughs> okay, so for the interest of time, you made all your eyeballs, they're amazing. You've cut as many planks out as you want, great. All you do is take your eyeballs and I would just tuck them behind wherever looks good to you, kind of like them off the side. And I would just take artist tape and tape them down. And um, you can use the tape, the masking tape like this, or you can use those, um, I believe, Chanel, keep me honest, I believe I linked some 3M products as well that are like removable stickies as well. They're fantastic. So you just literally tear them to the back and then we're just gonna make, if you're using tape, I love the artist tape because it comes off from your surfaces. We're just gonna make, we're gonna cut a piece and make a circle. And then I would just put them all over the back tape circle. So now we've just faked out a double stick of tape and tape them on. So I really like the 3Ms because they last a lot longer. But again, this is like, if you're putting it up for the day or two above your party, whatever you need to do that. Awesome. Okay. So hopefully we have a great grasp of how to make this. Also, we've got a wet palette here. Once you're done painting or when you're getting close to done, take your paper towel, dampen it, and you should be able to wipe off your acrylic paint so you don't have to scrub it or anything and then throw it away. The less paint in the waterways, the better. So go ahead and damp your paper towel, wipe it off, get, get the bulk of that paint off of there. You can use a little dish soap too. Throw that in the in the waste instead of your sink. And then what stuff is dried on, then go ahead and take a little soapy paper towel and get that off and it'll come clean. But the palette I linked is like this where it's white melamine. So it won't hold on to your paint. You just have to have a little scrubby scrubby. And always remember to use a different sponge than you cook with than for your paint because this is a totally different animal. We just don't want to ingest any kind of paint accidentally, even in a small way. So fabulous spooky creatures. 
that is all I have for you because I want to answer some questions. But thank you so much for joining and watching live on Monday night. It's September. We're getting into the spooky season. I know I'll be decorating my house soon. And I really appreciate it. You can find me on Instagram at probably sketch. I have more Halloween classes coming and you can find them online at Michael's. And then like this class, all of the ones I've taught, you can find on YouTube after. So, you know, if you want to go back and be like, what did you say? Just, you can um, scroll, scrub through there and find what you need. So I really hope this was helpful. That y'all um, enjoyed it. And if you did share it with friends, really appreciate it. And then whoever has questions, I'd love to answer some. Um, so we did have a couple questions, but the first two you already answered. And then the third one was about specifically Gesso and I actually, I actually answered that. So oh, um, we don't have any more questions. Awesome. I'm here just wiping off my palette as we're talking because that's going to make my life so much easier to clean up tonight. So thank and you. I did so check your, oh, sorry. I was going to say, I did check your supply list. You did include the 3M stickies. Okay. Okay, thank you. I couldn't remember if I put that in or not. Uh, we make these classes weeks ahead. So sometimes it's like, did I, did I put that in? Um, that's great. Yeah, I love the 3M. I have personally used this successfully. And uh, you just have to follow the manufacturer's instructions and they will uh, come off your walls or surfaces like a dream. So love that. Uh, and otherwise, good old masking tape, good old artist tape. Do you need to do? Spook it up. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all. Have a great evening.